Welcome to Heart of the Home podcast. Motherhood isn't easy, but it's so worthy. I hope you're reminded that your work as mom is the most impactful job of your lifetime. I'm Angie Tolpin. I've been a wife and homemaker for over 24 years, a mom to many, grandma, and the co-host of the Courageous Parenting Podcast, where my husband and I teach biblical truth on topics relevant to parenting today. On this podcast, we'll be talking about marriage, motherhood, homemaking, and so much more. Let's dive into the Word of God and be encouraged in the holy work we do. And if you like this episode, would you consider sharing it with a friend, giving the show a five-star rating, or leaving a review? It helps get the word out to more moms. So we have been going over a series that I've been calling The Heart of the Home. Um, For those of you who maybe this is your first live with me here, welcome. We are going to be talking about contentment today, choosing contentment in our home, in our season of life as wives and moms, and choosing contentment with all circumstances. Um, Last week, we were talking about our where our heart is at and loving our homes more and during that live it became really apparent um i had asked a question do you desire to be outside your home more than you desire to be inside your home and then to ask yourself the self-examining question why um, and to bring that before the lord to ask him to really reveal any heart issues that maybe you're struggling with or reasons why you might be struggling with um, truly embracing and loving your season of life and your home and your family and all of those things. And so I'm really excited because last week gave me some real perspective on what the desires are, what the needs are here in this group. Um, We were going to be talking about your home as an embassy and being ambassadors, but we're going to hold off and do that another week. And this week we're going to talk about contentment because there were just so many women commenting during the live saying, yes, let's talk more about this. Yes, let's talk more about this. So thank you. So we're going to have our Bibles with us. We're going to be in a few different places. Um, I want to read a passage of scripture to you guys in Philippians chapter four. Um, As I was studying contentment more and more and preparing for today, Um, The Lord just kept saying to me, keep their focus on God. Like, help them to see that when we have our eyes on Christ, He is enough. And when He is enough, we are less likely to be desiring more. And the real issue with contentment, or discontentment rather, the definition of discontentment is to be unsatisfied and to be constantly craving and desiring more or having jealousy or envy or covetousness. There's, there's different aspects of how discontentment um, can set in based upon what the temptations are that we're struggling with. And so I, um, I am really, really excited to take you guys to some really pinpointed scriptures And some really awesome encouragement is that, ladies, listen, I have gone in and out of seasons of struggling with contentment of the season that I'm in over the years. Like, it's not like I've arrived and here I am saying, hey, this is how you get there. This is a, I believe, something that we as Christians need to pursue and choose every day. Um, Some seasons of our life, it might be easier to be experiencing contentment, but you may have a year or two or five or ten where you are really contented and you're experiencing that. And then sometimes circumstances can hit. Sometimes um, we start to rest on our laurels as humans and we're not pursuing God in the same way. And and that can lead to, to many temptations, one being discontentment. And so I I bring this up because Paul himself exhorts us as he was learning how to grow in contentment. And isn't that beautiful, this this thought that this is actually something that we can learn. When I was going through the scriptures, that word learn was the word that kept popping out to me. So let's read in Philippians chapter 4. This is a very popular passage of scripture. Um... And it's very clear. It's very encouraging. In verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. I'm going to stop there for a second. We can't rejoice if we are discontented in things in the same way. And so being able to find that place of contentment 
in Christ and in the circumstances, in the season, in the marriage, in whatever, allows us to be in a place of peace where we can rejoice with a genuine heart. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. This is part of how we get to be lights in the world. And that is really what one of our main purposes is here. So this is a good thing that you are all and I am desiring. Um, and I have another verse that will encourage us in that in a second. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Um, there's a lot here. Do not be anxious about anything. When we are discontent, it can lead to anxiety, worry, stress, overwhelm. Because we can, when we're discontent, what happens? We can start getting grumpy and complaining and getting frustrated. And maybe we start pursuing and desiring different things. And then it creates an anxiety because we're never fully getting there. Um, this is something we have to watch out for. Um, it says, but, so here's part of the anecdote to not being anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It's not bad to desire growth. It's not bad to desire um, the things that God wants us to desire, right? Like, let me just think. I, I remember there was a season where I was really desiring to have another baby. And it was after we had had our first and we were having a really hard time getting pregnant the second time. So there's almost three years between our first two kids. And I remember praying and asking God and saying, Lord, I'm, I love my oldest daughter and I'm, I am so thankful for her. But I do want more kids. And I believe that in praying, I was praying in the will of God because desiring children is a good godly desire. Right? We know that the Bible says in Psalm 127 that behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. And so when we're praying and we're letting our requests be made known to God, one thing that the mature Christian should be asking is, Lord, let my desires be in alignment with your will, Lord. Show me what I should be desiring and show me what things are just things that maybe are more uh, fleshly that I need to put off. But this is the other thing. He's not saying here to evaluate your request. He's just saying, let your requests be made known to God. But to do it by prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving. Having a thankful heart for what we have. And being discontented makes it almost impossible for us to be thankful. I said almost, because discontentment is a condition based upon the choices that we make as women as humans on what we're going to think about what we're going to focus on and so when we're praying and when we're not praying if we're struggling with contentment one of the first steps i'm going to give you guys four or five steps today one of the first steps is to start taking your thoughts captive like scripture says take every thought captive into the obedience of christ to discipline every argument that is not biblical, right? We, we need to take our thoughts captive and choose to have thanksgiving and to think about what's true, what's lovely, which is the very next poor part of scripture. Here in verse 8, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And then it says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace. This is the second time. So it says the God of peace. And up a little bit further in verse 7, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Our discontentment, it settles in our hearts and in our minds. It doesn't settle in our feet. It settles in our hearts and our minds. God knows this, and he's saying, I can provide peace, and I can guard your heart and mind with the peace of God. If you come to me and you pray with thanksgiving, that is a choice we have to make. 
to choose to look for the things that we can be thankful for, the, the blessings that God has given us, the ways we've seen God move in really hard circumstances, the answers to prayer, rem reminding ourselves in prayer, Lord, I know you're faithful. You have shown yourself faithful to me in this and in this and in this and in this and say, God, you are a good God. Do you see how we're praising him and we're thankful for him? We're reminding ourselves in prayer for the things, the, the way that we should be thinking, what should, we should be focusing on. Here's the next part of scripture that was really encouraging to me regarding contentment. Verse 10, it says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly and just continues down, but I want I want to skip to verse 11. It says, Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. And in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who through him who strengthens me is oftentimes just pulled out of scripture and used in regards to whatever we're trying to do in life. And while it is a good verse to have memorized to remind ourselves who gives us our strength, and that's a really good thing, there is something powerful in understanding that the whole part that Paul is teaching here is talking about having rejoice in our hearts, being thankful. Having the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, regardless of circumstances. Coming to Him with thanksgiving. It's talking about how we need to train our minds to think on what is good, what is pure, what is lovely. And then it, He even says Himself, you guys, for I have learned. And then He says it again, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. If Paul, if this is something that Paul himself is saying, I have learned, then we as Christian women can learn this too. And that's the encouragement. If this is something that you struggle with on a regular basis, being content, maybe comparing to other people, struggling with jealousy, struggling with covetousness, struggling with envy, this is something that you can learn and you can train yourself to be focused on the good things. Excuse me there. Okay, I want to go to the next scripture and I just want to encourage you guys that again, this is something that Paul was tested and tried in. So as women, shouldn't we expect the same things? As Christians, we should anticipate that there is going to be a testing of our faith and that we want, we should want and pray, Lord Jesus, help me to pass the test of contentment so that I have joy and can rejoice in my home. Discontentment is often the result of focusing on what we don't have rather than seeing the good in what we do have. Um, I have my notes right here, so I'm just kind of sharing some things with you. Hebrews 13.5 was another really good scripture. It says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Again, this is, a, is pointing to like our sufficiency is not in the things of this world. Understanding that we live not by bread alone, but by the word of God, right? We talked about that in, in the very first video, that God is, God's word is the bread of life and that we need to be snacking on it regularly, which would be tip two, to help train your mind to be preaching to yourself, to reminding yourself of what to be thinking on. We have to be in the Word, not just daily, but even throughout the day. So one of the best practices that we here in this group have been challenging everybody to do, and if you do this, I want to challenge you guys, too, to post a picture of your Bible or your Bible in your journal on your kitchen counter, on your kitchen table, wherever you spend the most time. Post it in this group and share what you're learning because it would be a huge encouragement to the rest of us to go, oh, yeah, i got to put my Bible back out on the table. It's the next morning. And so as we're doing this and we're training ourselves to have Christ-centered homes where we're setting the tone in our home and we're trying to purposefully invite God to be the builder of our home. We're inviting God to be the one who is founded on his word, on the rock. But that means we need to have our Bibles out, right? So, Lord, keep our lives free from things that are going to tempt us to not be content. Keep our eyes on you. Remember your leaders. Here's a 1 Timothy 6, 
6 through 8 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of this world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. This is a scripture that is so clear, so bold. I want to hear, with contentment is great gain. Godliness, as in like righteous living, hearts upright before the Lord. If we're pursuing that and we have contentment, God's word says it's great gain. That's 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. Philippians 4, 11 through 13 is the scripture that I was mentioning earlier where Paul says, twice I have learned. And I, I, that to me just keeps coming back. We're going to continue learning here. So let's look at um, Luke 12, 15. It says, And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. You know, we all know that um, covetousness is one of the Ten Commandments even, which is in Exodus chapter 20. And, and we know that being discontent can lead to a lot of different things. It can lead to even bitterness. Um, or it can lead to resentment either towards our husband or towards an employer if we're not getting paid what we're due or if our spouse is not getting paid what they're due. And bitterness will defile many. And so when we are struggling with discontentment, there really can be a temptation there of many more sins, which is why this is such an important topic that we, we tackle at the beginning of this whole Heart of the Home series. Take care and be on your guard. That is an action thing. We have to be on our guard. We have responsibility in this. For the sake of Christ, here's 2 Corinthians 12, 10. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Again, it's that contentment with weakness. So challenging lately as I've been, um, we're on vacation right now with the family. And, of course, when, you know, that a couple of us got a head cold. And it was hard for me last night. When I was laying in bed, I was like, oh, I've got a big day tomorrow. I have a live in the morning with the ladies, and I want to give them my best. And then tonight I'm speaking actually at a homeschool retreat locally here with some sweet mamas that are homeschooling their kids. And, and I could use prayer for that, you guys, because right now I feel weak. I feel like my body just wants to lay down. I have a really bad migraine. And I'm sharing that with you, not to get pity, but to share with you that life, sometimes, that's just part of life. And in our weakness, that's when God can be most glorified. But we have to be willing to be humble enough and to be content with our weaknesses. And that's me right now. I'm being challenged in that. So I find that a lot of times when I teach on something, when I teach on something, I am often challenged with that very thing. And so... This is just the thing that God is challenging me with right now. What do these verses have to do with contentment? I'm going to read you guys um, a verse in Psalms, a verse in Proverbs, and in Romans. And then I want to share with you the five steps, and then we'll go into Q&A. I want to take a moment and let you know that every one of these shows is shot live with Moms in the Be Courageous app weekly in the private Christian mom group, where I do a Q&A and moms can ask me anything. If you want bonus content that exists for every one of these episodes, the Q&A, ability to be a part of the live broadcast and ask questions and be a part of the encouraging community, go to your app store and search Be Courageous app. That's Be Courageous app in your app store. I hope you join us. And if you're loving the show, please share it. Psalm 1611 says, You make known to me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy at your right hand are the pleasures evermore. I wanted to share this verse with you because, and ask you the question, what do you think this verse has to do with contentment? You make known to me the path of life. If we understand the true purpose in life, the path of life, we can trust God and we can trust God in that process, then we're less likely to struggle with discontentment, right? 
in your presence there is fullness of joy. Is there fullness of joy when we're discontent? No. No, there is not. And it depends on what type of discontentment is. It can be a real big struggle because there can be sin involved, like having a bitter, bitter root, not forgiving, resentment, things like that. Um, complaining. I think of the verse in Scripture that says, do everything without grumbling and complaining. Work heartily as unto the Lord. And if we're in our heads, maybe it's not even coming out of our mouths, but if we in our heads are discontent and we're frustrated, and we're like, I don't have enough money to fix to get a new I don't know dresser and the dresser drawers are always getting jammed and it's like this this real thing every time I'm putting the the clothes away I'm struggling with the drawers and I just wish that I could have a dresser that would work right like I don't know if you've ever been there before think of it, something else maybe the blender breaks and the dishwasher breaks and the oven breaks all at the same time we are tempted in those moments to be discontent but we need to be challenged and go into the presence of God because it's only there that we find the fullness of joy. Because it's the joy of the Lord which is not dependent upon our circumstances. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. That was Psalm 1611. Proverbs 19.23 says, The fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever has it rests satisfied. What does this have to do with contentment? Well, the definition of contentment, one of them, is simply satisfied. So if we are seeking satis to be satisfied, to be content, God tells us where it is. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever has it rests satisfied. So what do we need to seek more? The fear of the Lord. That's Proverbs 19.23. Someone could just put that in the comments here for everybody. That would be awesome. Thank you so much also, Elizabeth, for putting in the previous one. Um, Romans 14.17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit in us is dwelling in us. We need to invite the Holy Spirit into our homes Give our homes, our lives, our works, our services back to the, to the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to help us. In those moments where we're talking about taking thoughts captive, that's an action that we need to be purposefully looking out to do. But there's another aspect of this. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. You guys, I just think of the fruits of the Spirit, self-control, Right? How many of us have struggled with the comparison? Maybe you scroll through Instagram and you see these perfect Instagram-looking homes and you're like, well, I can't post because my home doesn't look like that. And I think that if, if you're looking at the highlights of other people's lives, you're not seeing the full truth. You're only seeing the portions that they're allowing you to see, the corners of the house that they're allowing you to see. And we need to exercise and say, Holy Spirit, would you give me discernment? Would you give me self-control to not covet? Would you give me peace and gentleness in my home? So I, I want to share a few more verses here with you guys, but I, before we do, choosing contentment by faith and not feelings. I think that this is really what we're talking about today. Um, I just, um, when I think about how we're trying to pursue contentment, there's this like feelings culture, and then there's faith. And we need to choose to find satisfaction, contentment in the presence of God because that's where the fullness of joy is, but also understanding that he's enough. And he, when we focus on him, there isn't room for discontentment. So what we must choose to put off is complaining, comparing, coveting, choosing not to be anxious and trusting God, which, you know, we're putting off anxiety there. There's many other things. What are the other things that you would be choosing to put off? I mentioned bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, um, maybe a pity party, being sad about your current physical condition or 
um, sad about a parent's physical condition. Um, right now, my dad is not doing well. Um, and I have so much joy for him because I know he's going to be meeting Jesus soon. And it's interesting because my, my siblings who don't have the same perspective, it's that whole 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we do not grieve like those who do not know the Lord. It's a night and day experience of how we are um, processing these end days with my dad. There's no grieving in the sense because I know that he's not going to be suffering anymore. And I love his faith. Every time I talk to him, he's like, Angie, we're going to meet Jesus in the sky. And he just loves the Lord so much. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful that I can sit and listen to worship music with my dad and hold his hand and pray over him. And he's like got tears and he's saying, amen. You guys, he is an inspiration to me right now because he is in so much pain. And I, while I can't go into details, be out of respect for him and share all the things that he's struggling with, I can share a few, like he's having a hard time holding his head up. He's having constant bloody noses that land him in the ER on a regular basis. They can't get his blood at the right level um, because he's on Coumadin. He has a seizure issues, so he's on seizure meds, and he has a problems walking and He's been disabled on his left side, which was his dominant side, for 18 years now. And so to see him, like, when I went to visit them, we watched sermons together, um, and we listened to worship music, and he sang me songs that he composed that are worship songs to the Lord, and I recorded them for my family so that my kids could try. Like, you guys, he has all of these physical limitations, and he has no control over the things in his life and that has been a challenge for a very long time and yeah there have been moments where he's gotten grumpy and he's struggled and it's been tough on everybody but this is exactly the perspective that we need to have regardless of the things that we are experiencing in this life or the things that the people we love so dearly are experiencing in this life can we rejoice can we be thankful? Can we see, not the silver lining, see God? We need to be choosing to think on the things that are lovely. We must recognize that we have what we have in this life stays here, except what we talked about in the very first video. We can build treasures in heaven by sowing seeds of faith in others. We read the scripture of um, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be, and building treasures in heaven, which was in Matthew. In the very first video of that, it sounds interesting to you and you haven't listened to that. I highly recommend you listen to the first part of the home. And I, I just wanted to bring that back up again because I think that when we have our perspective focused on what scripture tells us is truly important today, our mindset shifts. Our mind is being led to think biblically. And when our mind is focused on the Lord and on truth and not on lies, not on falsities, not on comparisons, not on us, not on insufficiencies, not on weaknesses, but we are content, that is when we will not be distracted and we can be fully focused on doing the mission that God has set us here to do. You guys, discontentment, comparison, all of these things that we've been talking about are a massive distraction for us as wives and moms and homemakers and missionaries on the earth. Our life is like that. It's but a vapor is what the Bible says. We need to be on purpose. We must choose to instead put on these things. Contentment by practicing. We choose contentment. Taking thoughts captive, focusing on the truth, what is eternal. Ask yourself every time, hold on a second, I'm so upset right now. Is this really eternal? And that really gives us perspective. Grateful for what we do have and focusing on the truth. The Lord is all we need. We need to get good at counting our blessings. Um, thankful hearts that pray. And then tests of life include things like financial circumstances, jobs, bodily concerns, wins and loses. You guys, children, not having children, infertility, pregnancy loss, um, 
health issues with kids. There's so many things, but this is truly, I, you know, as I've been just studying this myself, I realized I need to get better as a mom at teaching how my, teach, teaching my kids how to practice contentment. Because I want them to launch and have these things in their mind and written on their heart as like, okay, I'm struggling with this. I'm going to go to the Word. Okay, I'm struggling with this, um, with covetousness, or I'm struggling with comparing. I'm going to pray and be thankful. I'm going to count my blessings. I need to get better as a mom at teaching my kids how to fight this, how to fight grumbling, restlessness, striving in one's own strength, which would also be called toiling. Um, unhappiness, stress. Nothing will rob you of joy more than discontentment and comparing whatever it is you're comparing to other people. Isaiah 26 3 says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. God will keep us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed on God. When we trust him. That is God's promise in Isaiah 26.3. So let's talk about this, the, the main steps in choosing contentment. So these are some exercises we talked about. The first one, which is going to God in prayer, asking God to reveal to us areas where we've been discontent. Journal it. Pray it. Lord, would you reveal where I'm discontent so that I can be even closer to you, God. Pray and ask him to show you those areas. And then examine the reason why you're discontent and repent. Okay? Number two, here's the thing. How many of you guys, like, you can even leave it in the comments. What are you committed to changing today? So make a commitment to practice gratitude. Maybe you're good at praying with Thanksgiving, but maybe you're not so good at having the habit of being in the presence of the Lord. And experience in the fullness of joy. Make a commitment to whatever it is that you personally need to pursue to help you to be content. Number three, change your negative thought processes and focus on what is true. Number four, ask the Holy Spirit to give you self-control over your mind constantly. Like I would even write like self-control. Just on a post-it note, stick it on a, a mirror in my bathroom every morning. Lord, would you give me self-control over whatever it is. If it's negative thoughts or jealousy or bitterness or like any of the things that we've, rec- we've, we've uh, mentioned today. And then I, I just want to encourage you guys as we're going into the Q&A now, you can um, start putting in your questions and... Um, I just want to encourage you guys because the word is so powerful. When I was looking up these different verses that came to my mind on contentment, um, I wanted to, I had a debate. I'm like, wow, this could take a while. If we go through all of Matthew chapter 6, that's another one, right? It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. If you look even further, that's 633, Matthew 633. If you go even further to like verse 20 and you start really digging into it, it's so much of it relates to this topic of being content and not worrying about what we're going to wear, what we're, it's just amazing to me. I revel in the Lord. And one of the things that I realized I need to get better at is going, oh, Jesus, I'm so thankful for this word. Thank you for putting this in the Bible because you know our minds so well. I'm reminded of you being the creator, Lord. Thank you. So verse, um, chapter six, verse one, it says, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them for then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven we need to have a heart of wanting to live holy because he is holy but for the audience of one and i know you guys have heard this everywhere but when we start trying to have bigger audiences and we aren't satisfied and content with understanding that jesus is smiling down on his daughter who is serving her family And we feel like, oh, I need to do more. So maybe I need to sign up to serve more in church. I feel like I need to do more. I'm not doing enough. I just have to say, God says, you are doing enough. Seek me. Love me. 
Be with me. Grow. Work on your family right now. This is a season where I want to do a, a good work right here. We're going to wrap up now. Thank you guys so much for joining us.